Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button. Trust me, you won't want to miss what I have coming. This week on Straight From The Source, I chatted with season 19 voice contestant, Cami Clooney, and we talked about everything from what it's like filming with social distancing guidelines in place, potential new music, and if you're a fan of Cami, you're definitely gonna wanna stick around until the end because she told me what she's calling her fans. All that and more, and it starts right now. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, good. Thanks so much for chatting with me. Nice to meet you. Oh, yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Nice to meet you too. All right, good deal. So where are you right now? Are you back home in Buffalo? Or are you in Los Angeles? Um, I'm not allowed to say, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm not allowed to say. Okay, no. no problem. <laughs> so thus far, we have seen only your blind audition, not your battle round just yet. But that blind audition has already racked up more than a million views on YouTube, which is incredible. Yeah. So let's start there and kind of backtrack to how you got here in the first place. What made you audition for The Voice in the middle of a pandemic? Why not push your audition to a later season? Yeah, um, well, this is technically my fourth time auditioning. Um, yeah, so I auditioned um, first when I was 17. And um, yeah, then I got called um, to come audition again in February. So this is before anything was really happening with uh, COVID. And yeah, I just decided to keep going with it because I mean, I've been wanting to do this, to do this show for a while. And uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a cool time also because, um, you know, I'm not really working. I'm not doing my gigs like I usually do. So the, the opportunity to be able to um, go out to LA and do what I love is pretty cool. Yeah, that's really cool. So, yeah. I mean, did you watch last season of The Voice at all? Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah, it was um, mostly virtual, the halfway right. through, yeah. So what did you think of that when you saw that? Did that kind of deter you at all, maybe a little bit when you were thinking about auditioning or not really? Um, I don't think so, honestly. I mean, um, I did know that like it, it was going to be in person once um, we got to LA and everything. So that was, that really um, made me want to do it even more. But um, I just think, I think it's really cool either way, the way um, if you're in person or virtually, so. Right. So you said you auditioned back in February. So that was kind of before quarantine and lockdown and all that stuff. So you probably had a little bit of, you. did you have any gigs before your audition that you kind of been ramping up for the audition for? Um, I did have a few gigs, but uh, most of them were canceled because everything was shut down in New York, so. So how did you even, I mean, prepare? How do you go from being at home, not really being able to perform in front of a live audience to performing for some of the biggest names in the music industry? It was honestly just really nice because um, I like to perform in front of an audience and unfortunately like there wasn't actually an audience, but um, yeah, it was, I was a little bit rusty obviously performing in front of people, but um, yeah, it was, it was really, really cool. And uh, to be able to uh, perform in front of those four celebrities after having such a, a long break was just really, really cool. I mean, you did a great job. It was it was a great audition. Obviously, people are loving it on social media and YouTube. Um, but you, judging by your social media, it seems like you like to sing a little bit of everything. I think I've seen everything from Broadway show tunes to Billie Eilish. So how did you yeah. settle on Skinny Love for your audition song? Yeah, I, I like to sing a lot of different um, styles of music. Um, Broadway is like my first love. Um, I've been doing theater for a long time. Um, and yeah, I also, I consider myself like, um, pop alternative kind of, um, genre. And, um, there is like a list of songs that they give us that's, um, that are approved for the show. And I saw Skinny Love on there and, um, people have been asking me to sing that for such a long time. And I just, I never did. And so when I saw it, I was like, you know, that might be like a really good idea. And turns out it was. Yeah. So. I mean, within seconds you had John, Kelly, yeah. Gwen turning around. I mean. What was it like when those chairs were whipping around? Were you phased at all or were you just like super in love? Oh, I was, yeah, I was in shock. I wasn't even like processing that it was happening. I was just like, like, I don't even know. I closed my eyes and I opened them and like two of them were turned around and I was like, what? <laughs> just, yeah, I wasn't expecting it. I'm so thankful. 
Ugh, I mean, I can't even imagine being up on that. Like, the relief that must wash over you to get one chair turn, let alone, I mean, you got a four chair turn, even yeah. though Blake was blocked um, yes. by Kelly. Um, but I mean, what was kind of going through your head in that moment? I know in the clip that played before your audition, you talked mm -hmm. about how Gwen would be a good coach and John would be a good coach based on what they could offer you as coaches. So what was going through your mind in real time as you were making the decision on who was going to be your coach? Yeah, I, um, they did like kind of show, um, they kind of made it seem like I only wanted to pick Gwen or John, but um, I was really going between all four of them. Um, they're all just such incredible musicians and people. So um, being up there in front of them and like actually getting to talk to them and hear what they had to say to me and what they thought about my voice was just, it was a little overwhelming. Like I just didn't know what I was going to do. And then, um, John had like just some a really good pitch and said I kind of reminded him of Malin from season 16 who won and um, I just I love his music and I think he's an awesome musician and artist and so I don't know something in me was just like it's you got to pick John yeah, yeah so that's, that's what happened. Awesome. well I mean at this point we don't obviously know how far you're gonna go with John or not but um, you made it through blinds we know that you at least are in the battle rounds so I mean talk to me what was it like walking into your first rehearsal with John Legend it was insane I mean getting to walk in there and it was the first time I actually got to work with him was um, meeting Miguel too. So it was like double the amount of excitement. Um, yeah, it was really, it was really a, um, a star striking moment <laughs> to be even closer to him and having him coach me on something and not just like listen and, you know, he never heard me before, before. So this was, it was really cool. Awesome. Well, I mean, what's, on the on camera on screen obviously viewers don't get to see all that goes into those coaching sessions so as far as the the advice maybe that john has offered you even thus far what's something that you've really like kind of taken to heart um that he's helped you with um i think the thing that he has helped me with the most is really finding my style and realizing i don't have to sing everything um how another artist did it and really like being in tune with myself and my voice and um, portraying what I want to sing, um, the style that I want to make things, you know, like make it into something that, that is, um, is cammy, you know, it's not, um, it's not somebody else's song. Like, I, I feel like he really helped me figure out how to make things my own. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, the, the chance to work with John Legend, obviously, is like one in a million, um, and I'm sure it would be awesome to see all the little things that he's able to teach you and share, but we don't get to see that on screen. Yeah. Obviously. So lucky for you getting, I hope you're like harvesting all of it and like really taking it in. Oh, it's totally. Yeah. Like experience. <laughs> Um, but like I said, while, while we don't get to see everything on screen, we viewers have noticed some changes so far this season in terms of the social distance, social distancing guidelines in place, uh, the partitions in the rehearsal rooms, obviously the mentors a little bit further away from even each other than usual, and even the battle rounds having two separate rings, whereas usually obviously yeah. are in one ring literally battling it out so what was it like for you kind of filming with those guidelines in place yeah it was it was a lot different from the beginning I mean when I got to LA I had to quarantine um I had to isolate for a while um we all have to wear masks like any time that we aren't on screen um social distance from each other so that was a little different in uh, making friends and getting to know the other contestants. Um, but honestly, I feel like um, all of us got really close, even though we had to follow those guidelines, I think, because we were all um, just in this, in, in it together, you know? And um, yeah, it was, it was very different. Um, but it was, it was a really, um, it was a really good experience. And um, yeah. <laughs> Well, while this show might look a little different with those guidelines this season, and while this might be your first big TV singing competition, it's not your first singing competition overall, and you've, you've actually won a few in the past, right? So, yes. what about yeah. those? Yeah, um, I did some local competitions um, since I was like 13. Um, I did this one like Christian competition when I was 13 locally, and I won that, and um, you know, just some other local stuff, but um, I have done like short films and stuff as well. So I've, um, I know like kind of what it's like to be on screen. So, um, I think that was, that was nice to go into that and like know how to navigate that a little bit. And with those previous competitions, do you think that you took anything that you learned in those kind of 
consciously took with you into your voice journey? Um, I, you know, <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I feel like, I feel like, um, again, I think I just learned how to, um, sing what, what I want to sing, but also what is going to be, um, pleasing to other people as well. Like, um, you know, you can't go in there and sing something that somebody doesn't know at all. And then, you know, it's different, a competition versus just releasing music, you know? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, The Voice obviously offers contestants a massive platform while you're on the show. So what do you hope to use your platform for right now? Um, I really just want to use this platform to um, show my music and show my art and also just um, raise awareness for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome that I have and um, just be an advocate for people. And and uh, I, don't, I hate to say the word like influencer, but like be able to... Um, influence people for good, you know, and use what I have, use this platform that I'm um, gaining right now to really, to really use it for a good purpose. And um, as well as releasing, you know, my music and my art. Yeah. I saw after the, your first episode aired where you did talk about your diagnosis, um, mm -hmm. you posted a thing on social media to your EDS warriors. What mm -hmm. kind of feedback did you get from people after that air? Just with support or any messages to you? Yeah, I got a lot of good feedback. Um, I got a bunch of people with EDS um, reaching out to me saying like, thank you for being an advocate for us and, um, and showing other people that this, this isn't, such a rare disease you know there's a lot of people that struggle with it and um have a very hard time finding a diagnosis so i got a lot of feedback from people um that have it and even like family members um like people's family members that have reached out to me and stuff so it's it's been really nice to have um that validation that i'm really doing this for a purpose yeah that's great and i mean you you obviously got national support with with that and then you also have some local love as well. I think I've seen on social media a couple of places your name's up in lights in Buffalo. So yeah. what does it mean to have the support of your hometown as you're kind of fighting for this dream all the way on the other side of the country? It is very cool to have the support of my hometown. Um, yeah, I mean, just the amount of signs and people reaching out to me and um, yeah, Buffalo is really the city of good neighbors. Um, <laughs> they really like to uh, support their own, and it's very, it's very cool to see that. Yeah. Well, at this point, it's not just Buffalo. It's not just nationally. I mean, people all over the world at this point have seen you sing. But as you kind of touched on a little bit before, you're a bit of a triple threat. I mean, you have formal dance training. You were studying musical theater. You mm -hmm. appeared in a short film, which we'll get to again in a second. Um, <laughs> all these talents. What do you see yourself doing down the road? Are you, you think you'll maybe merge them together or is singing really the main focus at this point? Um, I honestly love all of it. Um, acting is a huge passion of mine. I would love to be in, um, in film and TV. Um, dancing as well, although like, um, I haven't really been into that as much in, in a very long time. So, you know, it's not really my strongest suit. Um, but yeah, singing and acting are definitely my main, my main goal. Um, Broadway plays, that sort of thing as well. Um, even like film, I'm very interested in editing and uh, directing and um, things behind the scenes. So, you know, anything in this industry, as far as acting and singing and dancing goes, I, I will take anything. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, like you, again, multi, multi talented is always a good thing. You don't want to like limit yourself to just one thing. Um, totally. Going back to the, that short film, Blink of an Eye, you were actually the lead in that. Um, so talk to me about how you even got involved with that. Because from what I saw, you kind of had your hand in a couple of different aspects of the film. Yeah, um, it was a local thing again. Um, this, it was just like, um, I think it was on like Facebook or something. <laughs> it was uh, like a casting call. And I auditioned and got the role. And it's about... Um, it's about this girl who struggles with um, drug addiction. She got addicted to opioids because she had um, an injury to her knee. And um, it, the film, the purpose of the film was to raise awareness for um, those struggling with addiction and um, raise awareness as far as, you know, being able to 
help them and um, you know prevent prevention as well. So like to get that film into different um, schools and different programs in order to help people. And yes, I, I did also sing the title track in that. Um, it was a cover of If I Get High by Nothing But Thieves. And um, I also did do work um, on some production stuff like I, I sat in the room and like watched the editor and like said like oh we should do this here and this here and uh yeah that is that's just what I love to do and I really hope that I get to do more of that in the future and maybe on a bigger scale so would you ever want to do it all on your own like directing calling all the shots starring in it everything honestly that would be very cool <laughs> I um since I was a kid I've just been very much like an entrepreneur and um I, I had this, um, I don't know if um, you knew about this, uh, Backyard Broadway that I started. It was like, yeah, it was an organization um, to raise money for kids with cancer. And I basically was like the director of all of it. I was like the coordinator. And um, yeah, it was a little bit weird to be like the director of people my age and my friends. But uh, it was, it's just, yeah, that's just, it's very cool. And that's, that's what I love to do. And the chance to be able to direct and star, and star in something would be yeah, that would be my dream. <laughs> well, fingers crossed for that for the future. Yes. Um, but I mean, all of that aside, um, you're killing it. So best of luck with all that. Um, you. You've certainly gained a voice in your local community through obviously your organization and your gigs. And then now on the voice with a broader scale, obviously for every contestant, the goal is to win, to go all the way. Um, but even if that's not ultimately the outcome, you're still gaining a fan base uh, along the way. So, I mean, after The Voice is over, do you see yourself releasing original music for those new fans and for people who've been with you all this whole time? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, like, no matter what, I mean, no matter how far I get in the competition, I would love to um, release music to my new followers. And uh, yeah, it's very cool to have people that are believing in me and want to hear more. And hypothetically, if that album was dropping tomorrow, what would the vibe be? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think it would be sort of like a eerie, um, you know, like Lana Del Rey, Billie Eilish kind of thing. Um, yeah, like eerie, soft, but, you know, add some like fun things as well. Yeah. <laughs> And are you a songwriter at all? Would you have a hand in writing the songs for the album, hypothetically? Yes, I, I am a songwriter. Um, I I definitely would like to have some help with that as well, because um, I definitely don't think it's like my number one strongest um, part of my part of myself. But um, I would love to continue to work on it and um, release this because I have so many ideas. It's just uh, I would love to have somebody really help me to narrow it down into what I want to say. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything written now that you've kind of been playing around with in the past few months? You know, I have a lot of things that are unfinished. <laughs> I have all these ideas and then I write them down and then I just, I kind of throw them away and I, I never finish them. So um, that's a goal of mine. <laughs> is to finish. finish the song. Yes. Yeah. Very cool. Well, one final question, perhaps most important of all, do you have a name for your fans? Well, I don't exactly know. I had like a, a little poll on um, on Instagram and stuff, and there were some mixed like feelings about all of it. But uh, at the moment, I'm going with Cam Fam. Cam Fam. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I have to think about it. There there were some other options as well. <laughs> well, I think that's a solid start. Um, and regardless of what you're going to call them, I'm sure that your fans will be cheering you on uh, through the rest of your journey and beyond. Um, and so I wish you the best of luck. And thank you again for chatting with me. Yeah, of course. And I also, you know, I forgot to say I'm a uh, I am, I do have a song released. Um, it's like an EDM track though. So I don't consider it like my full original song, mm -hmm. but um, that is released and out. So I do have something that is finished. <laughs> it's called a uh, wanna be by Resi and featuring me. So yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. Oh, that's good. I'll <laughs> link to it um, so that everyone can check it yeah, out. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cammie. Thank you so much for having me. Best of luck. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.